Hi everybody, I'm just going to sit down. Um, so another video, uh, I just at the minute because I'm so hit and miss with posting there's going to be over the next few weeks I've got some stuff going on and I might not be able to make it as regularly as I'd like to so hang on. I'm doing videos because well I just like making videos what can I say like the sound of my own voice so today I'm just going to do a couple of stitches with you because if you've been following our blog for a long time you'll know that I sometimes take it upon myself to just do stitch sampling and then make little books with them so this is one I made this ages ago in a class um, so that's one of them and then obviously I'm sure those of you who are regulars will have seen all my gingham books um, so there, there's one um, and this is another one this one's actually in the shop but nobody is still there but it doesn't matter because I don't mind keeping it um, yeah so I just like to that's a bit creased and my clothes properly I'll have to sort that out um, yeah so just stitch sampling just for the sake of it and it's kind of keeping your hand in and reminding yourself of these stitches which ones are your favourites and which ones maybe not so favourite um, so today I'm just going to do a web stitch which is one of these and I'm going to do a couple of bullion knots because there's three ways well there's more than three ways but there's three ways that I tend to do bullion knots um, just let me move that out of the way da, 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 da. that's better I've already threaded my needles so I'll do a web stitch first I'm just looking for the needle there it is so with a web stitch you use a blunt needle um, if you can pierce your fabric for the initial stage with a blunt needle then just use a blunt needle all the way through but if you can't pierce your fabric with a blunt needle for the initial stage then you use a sharp needle then you change to a blunt needle okay. so I've just put a knot in that I'm doing orange and white so that you can see what's happening let me just pull in okay so not in the end come up at north Go down at south, come up at east or west, whichever you want to do, and down again, and then you come in in between these, okay, and do another one, and another one. So you've got eight legs there, okay. And then you come up in the middle like that sorry. and you go under all the legs with a little just a little loop to fasten them you don't pierce the fabric at that stage and this is the stage at which you would change to a blunt needle because you're going to be weaving in and out of these legs so you go back over the one on the right and bring your needle up under the one next one on the left hand side back over under the left hand side of the next one back over under the left hand side of the next one and you do that all the way around till all your legs are filled with, with, uh, with these wrappings so you just wrap in each leg going round and round okay um, so back over, so this one, the thread is on the left of the leg, okay, you're going backwards and under it on the right, then you're taking that thread over there, you see, to wrap it, and then you come up on the left of the next one. So then you go back again, and you just do that all the way around until it's full, okay. And depending on how long your legs are will depend how much thread you need and I always 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 make sure I've got enough thread in my needle to do the whole thing I've never actually tried to change thread in the middle of this um, but I could imagine it's not the easiest thing to do to make it look neat I mean I'm sure you could do these in different colors it's not something I've ever done and then of course you would have to change your threads part way through 
but you're using a blunt needle because you're weaving here and you don't want to shred these threads as you're weaving it. Now I did once, well more than once, so I had a couple of people say to me why don't you just keep your sharp needle threaded and turn it over and do this bit with the eye. Well yeah, absolutely you can do that. But actually changing the needle if it's necessary is part of the process and I just love the process. I don't have a problem changing needles part way through something um, because for me it's all about the ritual and the tradition and the process if that makes sense. So you can see now that's building up and building up and you'll know when you've got enough on there because it'll start to get tighter to wrap them. I think and sometimes like I think one of these legs is slightly longer than the others. Um, it doesn't happen very often but mostly it doesn't matter because you can just keep going until you're happy with how it all looks okay um, uh oh see this one here is very tight and I'm struggling to get my needle under that but this one that I'm going to wrap now must be a little bit longer because there's more room there if that makes sense so I'm going to keep going that one that I said was a little bit longer I want to do that at least one more time and I don't know if you live in the UK but if you live in the UK and it's been said many times that these are like iced gems they're a little biscuit you can buy that's got an icing thing on the top a sugar icing on the top and they do look like ice gems absolutely do so I'm really struggling again with that one so there okay so now what you do is you go back over so I'm working as if I would be finished like working this going back over to wrap that one and then if I was still wrapping I'd be coming up over here but I'm not I'm finished now so I'm just going back over the one on the right taking my needle down yeah like that's how you finish it so and I'll just fasten it off like that so that's a web stitch. Now bullion knots, my bullion knots are nearly always 35 wraps, okay? Because I like the loops, the loops are to die for, I just love them. Hang on a minute, I'll get my needle out, it's already threaded. For bullion knots you need something called a milliner's needle or a straw needle and that's because the eye is the same size as the point, okay? because you're going to wrap this, even if you're just doing a standard bullion knot with 10 wraps say, 8 or 10 or whatever, you still need to pull this needle through those wraps and that's why it's important that you use a milliner's needle or a straw needle. Okay, so I've knotted my thread. So you come up there, which you call A, okay, and you go down at B. Now that is probably a quarter of an inch and the distance between A and B denotes the number of wraps you're going to need to cover that space. Now I'm going to try 10 for that, okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, alright. You hold those wraps and then you pull your needle through. And what you're doing is pulling that thread through the centre of those wraps to create a core and then you go back down at B. And that's a standard bullion knot, okay? Now, my 35 wrap ones, I do them two ways. So A is there. My favorite is to get B hardly any space away from A. So almost touching A. So A and B are virtually in the same place, okay? And then you do. 35 wraps, okay, I'm going to count this in my head, all right. Oh. Right, okay, 
So then you hang on to them with your thumb and your forefinger and you pull your needle through. And then you push them down. Push them down like that. Okay. And then you go back in at B, which remember is almost touching A. There. Just a minute. And if you get a little loop at the bottom where you pull it through, I just get hold of the wraps and pull it again like that and it goes. And that makes like a little droplet, which I absolutely love. And they look lovely and white on the edge of something. Like a tiny little droplet. Or you can do it further apart, so you can have A, and then B maybe, I don't know, an, under a quarter of an inch away, but still further away than the previous one I did. All right, um, 35 again. I apologise for my thumb. I lost my fingernail and it's growing back, so it's very clean now. Uh, so I've lost count, right, I think that was 10. Right, and if you're getting a rhythm doing these, sometimes I sit at night and I just do these and it's automatic. I just do, 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 you know? It's uh, really relaxing and therapeutic when you get into a rhythm. So push them down and then go through to the back again and with that one you kind of like get a little bridge can you see it's like a little bridge but the droplets are my favorite without a shadow of a doubt the droplets yeah okay so i hope that helps somebody um i'll fasten that off and then i'll stand up and turn the camera off i have to stand it's a new camera and i can't do it without standing up because it's at the back which is very silly